There is definitely something special about those who choose to answer the call to go into public service, especially these days when we're so fractured, especially, especially, especially when you're a woman. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is the junior senator from Minnesota, Tina Smith. Tina is a champion of women's rights and fighting climate change and is smart and funny and most importantly, gets shit done. We definitely need more leaders like her in D.C. And I got to talk to her in front of a live audience in Minneapolis as part of Men Post Festival. So take a listen and make good choices. Oh my goodness, thank you so much for thank that you. lovely introduction. First, okay, so I want to start by asking you a question that only you would be able to answer, just to make sure you're not actually Tammy Baldwin. Um, <laughs> is it true? Is it true that you get... <laughs> I am kidding me. Frequently. <laughs> Tammy and I are frequently mistaken for one another. In fact, we actually did a video once where we wore exactly the same <sighs> blazers, and we looked exactly the same, and... So um, I just so if you want to just verify my identity, <laughs> I would just be happy. Need your social security number if you don't <laughs> right. mind. Is, is she also oh nine one two with the okay. last? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're all jotting it down. Is she also known as a velvet hammer? Well, she, I don't know. She could be, but I have to tell you a quick story. I as I I'm frequently you know people confuse us. And one day I was walking across the um, plaza in front of the Capitol, and there was this really great enthusiastic group of students mm -hmm. and they shouted out to me um, we love you Senator Baldwin <laughs> and so I'm torn I don't know exactly what to do I'm in kind of a hurry so I said I'll just accept the compliment and I will uh -huh. pass it on to Tammy later right 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 and and so um, I said I just go thank you and they, but they continue to engage with me, and then oh I start to gosh. feel like I'm living a lie, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know? And so I, then I feel I have to confess, and I said, actually, I'm Senator Smith from Minnesota, and they go, oh, we love you too. <laughs> That's so it worked incredible. out. Whenever yeah. I used to, if I ever would meet anyone and they would say, I feel like I know you from somewhere, I would say, I'm Katie Couric. Yeah. <laughs> right. And they were right. like, you don't seem impressive. I'm like, I'm not. Yeah. Don't worry. Right, right. Oh, yeah, this is a whole other, whole <laughs> other thing. You would be amazed what people say to me when they see me and they can't quite figure out who I am. Mm -hmm. And it'll be like, um, you know, how do I know you? This happened to me this past weekend. Right. How do I know you? I said, well, I'm, I'm a senator from Minnesota. And he goes, oh. And he goes, now, what's your name? Yeah. <laughs> now, we're from Wisconsin, so it was okay. Uh, but. Wisconsin. We know about Wisconsin. Um, now, I think there might be, I mean, everybody in this room, everybody here just knows you so well. They know your work. I think there are probably people listening to the podcast who aren't quite as, as familiar with your work, but you really are a person who gets it done. And I love that so much about you. How do you personally decide what to throw your weight behind? How do you personally decide what is going to become a passion for yeah. you? Well, so, I mean, part of it is just intrinsic. Right. You know, what I care the most about, what is what I feel the most fire for, the most passion for. But it also, um, you know, at, at my heart, I'm an organizer. So I started okay. out in politics, yep. you know, going door to door with Sam and Mason in a stroller, knocking on doors and talking to people. And so that passion for engaging people and getting you know, helping them to understand how powerful their voice is, mm -hmm. is still a big part of how I think about my job as senator. So I also feel real passion for the things 
that people tell me that are really important to them. I mean, and there are so many examples of that. You know, I'm really passionate right now about how we can make sure that people that are working growing food, um, mm -hmm. especially new farmers, beginning farmers, farmers of color, that they have a path for having a business that actually works for them. I mm -hmm. don't know that I would have known that if I hadn't talked to people who ah. transmitted their passion you know, back to me. Right. So there, so that's a big, that's a big part of it. And then there are things that I care so much about because, I mean, for example, I do have done a lot of work on mental health. Yes. Um, and that is, yes. Um, you know, just then appreciating the power of being a United States Senator and speaking mm -hmm. openly about mental health, about the challenge that people have, talking about my own experiences with depression when I was younger, you start to appreciate the the power that that has for freeing people up, getting rid of some of the stigma around mental illness and mental health challenges, and then figuring out what to do about it. Right. How to, how to pull a coalition together to take action. Right. I mean, that's what makes this job like that's 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 what makes putting up with Ted Cruz every day worth it. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I don't think I could find it within myself. You oh. dig you dig deep, Samantha. <laughs> you have to dig deep. Oh my God! You when 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 the the tape stops rolling, you need to tell us some Ted Cruz gossip. <laughs> you need to pledge that you will do that. Is there a, a decision that you made, a choice that you made in your life? that you really think was such a signature moment that changed everything for you? Well, it's such an interesting question because, you know, you before we did, we, we started to do this in front of all these people, we were having yeah. a conversation, just the two of us, and you were telling me about your, your daughter mm -hmm. who is very clear about yes. what it is that she wants to do. Yes. And um, we were saying, well, you know, what a blessing that is that you know um, you're, like, so clear about your, your purpose, your, your passion. And um, I was never that way. Okay. I just wasn't. And, you know, I um, was blessed to have had the opportunity to work with somebody that many of the people in this room know, R.T. Ryback, who was the mayor of Minneapolis, a great mm -hmm. mayor of Minneapolis. And R.T. tells the story about, like, being nine years old and going up to the top of the Fauché Tower in downtown Minneapolis and looking out over this beautiful green emerald city and saying, one day I want to be mayor of this town. Wow. Which is kind of incredible. He was nine years yeah. old. A little weird, but it was still... It was still good. But so I never really had that moment. You know, I think for me, it was all about improvising in the moment. Like, like here's an opportunity and here's something that looks interesting. Those people look like they're really passionate about what they're doing and mm -hmm. I want to go and help them. And it doesn't feel like one like big decision. It feels right. like pivoting in the moment of seeing where there's work that needs to be done and mm -hmm. you have a real purpose. And, and that's how I went to work for the city of Minneapolis. That's how I ended up going to work for Mark Dayton when he became governor. Mm -hmm. And when Mark asked me to be lieutenant governor, that's, that's a lot of what happened. And then when um, there was a need for somebody to step in and serve in the United States Senate. Right. Those were all like really, I mean, I knew those were big moments when they were happening, um, but it felt like a moment to improvise what the next thing was going to be given right. what was happening. It's interesting, as a comedian, you probably know something about this. I do. I think it's like improvising, but also find, saying yes to things. Yes, exactly. Without really knowing what the hell you were doing. Yes. <laughs> What, without really knowing the trouble you were going to cause yourself. That is exactly <laughs> right. Leaping without looking. Right. <laughs> sort of going, let's just see what let's happens. Let's just see. Let's this go on an adventure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Do you think that you would have run for office if the appointment hadn't come? You, do you think that this uh, would have been no or I don't I don't really think so. I mean, I ran for lieutenant governor and when the dis, when the conversation came up about mm -hmm. me running for lieutenant governor, I literally I said that's ridiculous and right. I walked away. Right. And then I was like, well, maybe it's not so ridiculous. Yeah. Um and then running for the senate, yeah. um it was a very concentrated like 72 hour what to do, you know, Al it was Al was going to step down. Mm -hmm. It was very painful. There was a lot of there was a lot of luck going on, and um, I get a phone call from um, Chuck Schumer, mm -hmm. who I don't know. It's like it's like Darth Vader calling me on the phone, right? You know, he put it's his like, gym weights down yeah, I know, I know. and called you. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. And you know, I flew out to talk with him, and I started, and I had a pretty good idea of what needed to be in place for me to be able to be successful in this endeavor of accepting the appointment and mm -hmm. then running right away in ten months, and then most likely running again. You know, n n not even you know two years later. Right. Um, and so I I decided to do it. And I jumped, even though I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. And I'll never forget, it was the announcement. We are in Minnesota's beautiful state capitol. Mark announces that it's me. I speak briefly. And then we take questions from reporters. And there was a reporter in the back of the room. Uh, I can't remember who he was. He's but I here. remember and him. And he's here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, but, and he basically said, Lieutenant Governor, you know, you've never run statewide before, really. And, you know, this is you're going to have to raise a lot of money and this is going to be a big project. Like, do you really think that you can do this? Mm -hmm. And I just remember that, like, I felt this like I'm trying. I know you said we could swear on this podcast. We have to. We're actually <laughs> obligated to swear. That's that a was rule. in the contract. And yeah. I didn't <laughs> but I looked at him and I just said, I should not be underestimated. Uh, and, you know. I don't know where he is, but I know where I am. <laughs> oh, I just got such a, there's so much just, there's serotonins are coursing <laughs> through my body. Do you ever, I mean, do you wake up in the night when you make a really big, when you make a really tough call, does it wake you up at night? Do you wake up in a cold sweat as I do? Or do you just go, you know what, once I make the decision, I'm going. I follow that trajectory. I go. Well, you know, the thing that is difficult is when you are making a tough decision and you know that no matter what you do, somebody's going to be disappointed. Sure. Somebody, you know, there. you sometimes have choices where, Everybody thinks you've done exactly the right thing, and nobody thinks otherwise. And those choices are few and far between, right. honestly. And so, um, you, so I think about that. Um, but it's I, I can't say that I've ever made a decision where I was like, "Oh, that was just a terrible decision. I shouldn't right. have done that." You right. know. Um, but I mean, I have stayed up all night long trying to figure out what to do. Sure. And then you go, well. You know, it's this is this is this, this is the next step. I mean, it is definitely you're making decisions for millions of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a big, that's a heavy weight. I would imagine that takes some serious deliberation. Yeah, it 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 does. It does. Want to listen to the rest of this episode? Head over to your favorite podcast player to hear the entire show. I highly recommend it. 